John chapter 11. I'm just going to skip through these verses and uh, take a time and not read all of them. But the Bible said in verse 1, Now a certain man was sick, named Lazarus, Bethany, the town of Mary, and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment, wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sister said unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. And verse number 11 said, These things said he, after he hath said of them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth. But I go that I may awake him out of sleep. Then the disciples said unto the Lord, said, uh, Then said the disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. How bad Jesus spake of his death, but they thought that he had spoken of taking a rest in sleep. Then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. Then the Bible said in verse number 39, And Jesus said, Take you away the stone. And Martha said, The sister of him that was dead said unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. And then in verse number uh, 43, in verse 44, it says, And when he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth bound, hand and foot with grave clothes. His face was bound about with a napkin. And Jesus said unto them, Loose him and let him go. Uh, in these verses, of course, we all know these verses. We've heard this chapter so many times. Wonderful chapter it is. And a lot of great things that we could say about this. Right. But if you'll notice in verses uh, number uh, two, it says Lazarus was sick. And uh, then they go tell Jesus, and uh, Jesus delays his coming. And in between his coming, he, he, it says in verse 11 that Lazarus sleepeth. So he's sick, now he sleepeth, actually he's dead, but he sleepeth. And then the Bible said that the disciples didn't understand that, and he said plainly, Lazarus is dead. Then you come to verse 39, it says he stinketh. And then in verse 43 and verse 44, he's alive. Then you go back to chapter number 12, and he's sitting at the table, fellowshipping with the Lord. So here's a man that was sick, he got sleep, he died, he stayed in the grave four days, he stunk. Next thing you know, he's alive. And then he's sitting at the fellowship, communing with the Lord. So I got to thinking about that, and something had to transpire. Something had to take place from the time that Lazarus was sick until the time that he's sitting, communion, and fellowshipping with the Lord. Something had to transpire. Something had to take place. Now, we're in a mess in our churches today. We're in a mess in our life. We're trying everything in the world. And I thought about this. I thought about it when Lazarus was sick. Uh, I, I'm sure his sisters, uh, I'm sure they tried everything they could try. Uh, Ever known remedy of that day, I believe they tried it. Uh, somebody might just come by and recommended somebody like they do us. You know, you get sick and everybody say, try this or try that or here's a pill, you know, and take mine. I didn't take it all. You take it, you know. And, and uh, they got, we got every kind of remedy in the world. If you say, you know, the Baptist church, you tell somebody you're sick, you'll get 14 healing processes. Amen. Uh, how to do this. And I'm sure, I'm sure they done everything they could do. And, you know, we're doing everything we can to bring revival. We're doing everything we can my friend, to uh, help our churches and encourage our churches and revive our churches, our homes, and even our country. We're doing everything we can. We're, we've went to gadgets and gadgets and games and promotions and entertainment. We've done everything in the world. We get the best known preachers in the world. Whoever's popular, that's who we want to get. Whoever draws the crowds, you know, well, we'll, we'll get him. He draws a big crowd. And uh, we're in that day. I hate to be that way, but we're in that day. I told a fellow the other day, I said, I wonder if God told you to get a preacher uh, that never had preached a revival, <laughs> never had preached out nowhere, and God told you to get him, and didn't have no name, would you just get him? Amen. But no, we got to have the best, you know, we got to have this and, and, and all that, and don't be, I'm not being critical, and don't throw nothing at me, but uh, we think sometimes personality. In fact, uh, Brother Doug, when I was in evangelism back years ago, 
I said, book three years ahead, and I was so busy. And, and But sometimes, you know, people would have you in a meeting just because you was out there and you was busy. And I'd been in a few meetings, Brother Mike, and I, I think, man, I ain't even supposed to be here. <laughs> you know, I'm not even supposed to be here because it wasn't the will of God, you know. But we're trying everything in the world like Mary and him did. They tried everything in the world. I'm sure they tried this and they tried that, and there was nothing better. It just seemed like the situation got worse and got worse. And finally, after they exhausted all their resources... In verses number 3, it says, Therefore his sisters uh, sent for the Lord. I, I want to preach for a few minutes on somebody, go get God. Yeah. Somebody, go get God. Now we can try everything in the world, we don't try, but I'll tell you what, the only reason that Lazarus was ever raised from the dead, the only reason that he ever got the fellowship at the Lord's table was because somebody went and got God. Amen. And I'll tell you what, my friend, I, 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 I think, you know, sometimes we, we wait to the last thing. Uh, my friend, it's like going to the doctor. Uh, so if you're like me, I, I don't like to go to the doctors and I'll try everything in the world. I'll go to the shelves, you know, the drugstore. Uh, Brother Johnny, and I'll look and see everything I can see. If it maybe sounds like I got it. And if, if I can don't do no good, I'll call Sister Ned and say, what can I take for this or take for that? Uh, what, can, what about this or that? And you do everything you can to eliminate going to the doctor. And finally, at the last resort, uh, it seemed like we said, well, I guess I might as well go see the doctor. Amen. I'm afraid sometimes that's the way we are. We're trying everything in the world to save our problems. Uh, we're signing everything in the world to bring revival. But I'll tell you what, my friend, at the last resort, it says, uh, seems like we want to turn to God. Amen. Uh, and I'll tell you what, my friend, I remember the old timers uh, at White Oak Springs Baptist Church when I got saved, uh, eight-year-old boy uh, back in the country, uh, and my friend, we'd meet on Sunday morning, be deader than a hammer. Uh, I mean, dry and dead. Uh, you know what, them people didn't go home, uh, my friend, take off somewhere. Uh, them old timers would go home and get in their bedrooms, uh, and my friend, they'd say, oh, God, they'd testify. They'd say, oh, I went and got in the bedroom today. Uh, said, God, is dry this morning. Uh, Lord, it was tight this morning. Uh, please meet with us. Uh, we'd come back there on Sunday night, Brother Mike, you know what? God fall all over in that place. Uh, you know why? Somebody, uh, my friend, went and got God. Uh, somebody, uh, my friend, went and told the Lord. Uh, and my friend, the Lord come. Uh, now let me say first of all tonight, uh, if we're going to get God, uh, there's got to be a releasing uh, of an invitation. And uh, uh, my friend, you know why I'm here tonight? Uh, I'm not just passing through. Uh, I just didn't have nowhere else. Uh, I, it wasn't that I didn't have nowhere else to go. Uh, I wasn't just coming through up here, my friend, riding around. Uh, my friend, a few weeks ago, your pastor uh, invited me to come, uh, and I'm here because I responded uh, to that invitation. Uh, just to be honest, uh, if he hadn't sent out an invitation, uh, I probably wouldn't have come. Uh, my friend, I probably wouldn't have known about it, maybe. Uh, and my friend, I wouldn't have been here, but I'm here because of invitation. Uh, I'm going to tell you what, my friend, if we're going to get God, uh, somebody uh, is going to have to invite him to come. Uh, somebody uh, is going to have to send an invitation. Uh, sometimes we just take for granted uh, that God's going to come. Uh, we just take for granted that uh, church is on, lights is on, uh, service is started. Uh, God's going to show up. Uh, and I'll tell you what, uh, just to be honest with you, uh, he wouldn't have showed up for this uh, if he hadn't sent for him. Uh, he's in another town. Uh, my friend, going in a different direction. Uh, and the only reason he turned around and came uh, is Mary and Martha. Uh, my friend, those that he loved uh, sent for him and given invitation. Uh, and my friend, he responded to that invitation. Uh, I think about my friend over in the in the book of Mark chapter 4. Uh, the disciples was in a ship and the Lord uh, was down in the bottom of the ship sleep uh, and the great storm come. Uh, they was in that storm uh, and my friend they was doing everything they could uh, to bring her in. Uh, hey my friend bring her under control. Uh, they even throwed some good stuff away uh, trying to bring that thing in control. Uh, they my friend tightened up the sails or whatever you do uh, my friend to try to bring that thing and finally uh, at the last resort uh, so Somebody said, so one of them said, somebody better go down to the bottom of the ship eh, and get the Lord. Eh. And my friend, they went down to the bottom of the ship eh, and said, Lord, cares not we perish. Eh. And my friend, Jesus rose and said, oh, you little faith. Eh. I done told you we're going to the other side. Eh. And Jesus stepped up eh, and my friend spoke peace. Eh. My friend brought peace. Eh. They just rode her out in peace the rest of the time. Eh. You know why? Somebody, eh. my friend, went down to the bottom of the ship and went and got the Lord. Eh. I think about over in the book of Luke, chapter 
chapter 8. I think about old Jairus. My friend, he had a 12-year-old daughter who was sick. I'm sure he done everything he could. He might have held her. And my friend held her to his chest. And my friend loved her and gave her medicine tried to help her. I can see him, Brother Bobby, as he walks over there. He gets his coat on. He puts his hat on. And my wife says, where are you going? He said, I'm going to get God. I heard about Jesus down the road. I'm going to get the Lord. And my friend, we're out of help. We're out of hope. And my friend, he walked down through there and got the Lord. And the Lord, my friend, come. And my friend touched his little old daughter. Reason that little daughter found life. Just took time to go get the Lord. Just to be honest with you, if he hadn't have went, that little old girl would have probably died. And my friend, that portion would have been in the Bible. But thank God she arose. And my friend found life because he took the time just to go get the Lord. I thought about my friend in the book of Luke. They had a centurion, had a servant was sick. And the Bible said he loved him. And my friend, he said, he said, y'all go down yonder. I've heard Jesus is down yonder somewhere. And I heard all these things he can do. Y'all go down there and tell him. My servant's sick. He went down there and said, hey, my centurion sent us down here. He's got a servant that's sick. And said, you need to come. And my friend, you know what? Jesus came. And he got nearly there, Brother Doug. And that centurion sent him out and said, hey, wait a minute. I'm not worthy you come in my house. I said, just speak the word. He said, just speak the word. I said, I say this and he does that and that and do that. Just speak the word. You know what Jesus said? Oh, I've never seen such great faith. And that centurion was touched and healed. You know what? Somebody went and got the Lord. Somebody sent for God. In the book of Acts chapter 27, when Paul was in that storm and the wind was blowing the great storm. And my friend, you know what happened? They throwed away a good cargo. You know, sometimes we get rid of a lot of good stuff. My friend, we wouldn't have to get rid of it if we'd just go get the Lord. Sometimes we're through here trying this and trying that. Sometimes we're spending a lot of money. And my friend, trying to get help. My friend, paying some, my friend, counselor or some therapist. Or my friend, buying some book by some quack. We're trying to do everything in the world. And my friend, to get some help. But I'll tell you what the Bible said all of a sudden, old Paul said. I tell you, I guess I better get down to the bottom of the ship. And he went down to the bottom of the ship. You know what? My friend, he got a hold of God. He said, I'm saying, God, we're in a storm. God, we need help. And the Bible said he come up there in a little while. He said, be of good cheer. He said, I believe God. There stood by me this day, the angel of the Lord. Everything going to be okay. We're going to lose the ship. I said, we're going to lose everything else. But ain't nobody going to lose his life. You know why? My friend, he took the time in the midst of the storm to go to the bottom of the ship and get the Lord. I'm telling you that. We're somebody. We're somebody. And this week, we're somebody this week. Go get God. We need God. We need God. Amen. Boy, on and on. Acts chapter 12. Put Peter in the jail. You know what the Bible did? The Bible said the church met. The church met and sent for the Lord. And the Lord went down there. And my friend sent his angels down there and got him out. Oh, Paul Peter didn't even know what was going on. All he knows, my friend, was something has happened. Oh, you know what? How, how, you might say, well, how'd I get out of here? I'll tell you how. There's a little old church over there on their knees sending an invitation for God to go down there. You know what? I thought about this. That church there, you can't find whether there were church ever got any glory. <laughs> God never mentions that church. He never mentioned that crowd was over there praying. They just prayed, sent the invitation. God went down there, done it, and got all the glory for it. Amen. I'll tell you, I'm telling you, somebody needs to go and get the Lord. So if we're going to get the Lord, number four, well, first of all, there's got to be a release of invitation. Amen. And let me just say this. Sometimes we send, we send for God, and He comes. Then we don't send for him again. I'm going to tell you what, every time you meet, somebody needs to send the invitation for the Lord. Amen. Every time you meet, you can't go off. You can't go on past blessings. I know you had a good service Sunday, and I'm glad you did. That's wonderful. And I'm not taking away from that. And I'm glad you're still excited. This is a whole different service. Tomorrow night will be a whole different service. That's our Friday morning to be a different service. And Brother Bobby, every day, my friend, we better send an invitation and ask the Lord to come and meet with us. And my friend, every day we have, we got an invitation. Hey, listen, listen. I came up here a few weeks ago. You know why, Brother Doug? invited me to come up. I ain't been back since. <laughs> now sometimes I just show up. No, I, I do that, don't I preach. I don't just come up here to preach. 
I don't come up here and get no money. No. I don't do that. I, I pay my own way. And Brother Doug knows that. But you know, and, and sometimes I just come and on, on, you know, come up and visit with y'all and be here. I'm a member. I got to show up sometime. <laughs> Amen. And then he'll invite me to come back and I come preach. And I'll stay away and then he'll invite me back. But you know what? My friend, listen. My friend, he continues asking, Brother Bobby, the only reason you're over here is he sent you an invitation and asked you to come. And you responded that. And I'll tell you, you know when you'll be back? When he sends you another invitation and asks you to come. These people that's coming in, he sent them an invitation. I'm going to tell you what, God wants to come. God wants to meet with us. He's a miracle working God. He's a hellin' God. Thank God. He's a storm staving God. My friend, he's a God that my friend is able to do. Exceeding the bond of us. He's a God that nothing's impossible. Now you might as well book up. I feel like preaching. I've been carrying this for three weeks. Just let me, let me have it. I tell you, he's a God that does everything well. And he wants to meet with us. But sometimes he's just waiting on an invitation. <laughs> So first of all, there's got to be a release and invitation. Second of all, if we're going to get God, there's got to be a realness of the right spirit. <laughs> they sent for the Lord. And you know the story. He, he, he waited, uh, what was it, four days, Brother Doug? Four days he waited before we come. Now they're expecting him to come. They thought he'd just throw everything down, head, his, head their way. He didn't do that. <laughs> for, can't you imagine the first day? I wonder where he is. It was it for him. I mean, he must not love us as much as he thought he did. <laughs> Amen. He must not like us. I can say one of them said, so maybe one of them said, Martha, he must not like your cooking last time. Amen. And, and, and you know, this and that. And my friend, he's told, hey, can you imagine? Uh, my friend, oh, I don't know, but for three or four days. And finally, finally he tells the disciples, so, well, I guess we're going to go. <laughs> and they said, well, Lord, uh, he sleeps. Uh, he's well. He said, oh, he's dead. And we need to go. And my friend, you know what? He got down there and somebody, somebody told Martha, said, the Lord's come. The Lord's come. He's out there. And my friend Mary, Martha gets up. And my friend, in verses number 19 and 18, uh, right in there, the Bible said, my friend that Martha got up. And verse 20, as soon as she heard that he was coming, she, she, she went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. Now watch this, verse 21. Then said Martha to Jesus, Lord, if it had been here, my brother wouldn't die. I, I kind of believe it's like this brother Bobby yeah. I believe she went out there and said Lord uh -huh. <laughs> if you'd have been here where you been we sent for you four days ago and my friend he's done dead now why are you wasting your time to come now he's done dead he's in the grave he's a stinking where have you been why didn't you come when we offered you why didn't we come when you asked him to come and my friend she had such a bad spirit and the Bible said listen she goes on and says Lord I know I know he's going to live again out on the resurrection Jesus looked there and said I am the resurrection and the life he that believes in me though he dead yet shall he live again and you know what she said he said believest thou this and she said well I believe you're the Christ but I don't believe you can do nothing about this <laughs> you know that's probably our problem sometimes after we after we sin for the Lord he does come we don't believe he can do nothing <laughs> he can't help our problems he can't solve our problems our problem's too big you know what she said hey he dead he stinks he's in the grave it's over it's too big for you you can't handle it and Jesus was trying to tell her how the resurrection of life believe it's there she said I believe you're the Christ but I don't believe you can do nothing about this huh no, you watch this. The Bible said, watch this. And the Bible said, uh, he goes on and says, she, verse 27, she said to him, Yea, Lord, I believe thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which would come into the world. And then when she had said that, she just left him. And the Bible said, and called Mary, her sister, said, The Master is come and called her for thee. And as soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came. But watch this, my friend, Jesus, Mary, or Martha had such a bad spirit, Jesus was on his way. And her spirit stopped him. Because you read that, the Bible said when Mary went out there, he was in the same place Martha left him. You know, I'm afraid sometimes we send for the Lord, and when he does show up, some people's got such a bad spirit, it just stops him. Huh? Amen. Got some old foul spirit in here. My friend, she, got, you ever notice this? Martha had such a bad spirit, she run around by herself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you ever wonder why you're running around by yourself won't nobody have nothing to do with you <laughs> you might have a bad spirit amen come on now help me out uh -huh. come on uh -huh. amen I asked Lisa back there I said how are you doing she said I'm, don't bother me she said I'm, I'm, what did you say huh 
I'm upset, Neil. I said, well, I can't help that. Amen. I can't help you live with Mike. Amen. But, but you know, but she was kidding. I'm just, cause she turned around and said, I'm just kidding about that. I said, no, you done said it now. Amen. Uh, my friend, but listen, I, I sometimes just keep picking on you, Lisa. But, but you know, sometimes, uh, my friend, we come in here and we got such a bad spirit that uh, my friend won't nobody have nothing to do. She went out there and told him off. Uh, and her spirit popped God. Uh, my friend, listen, if you'll notice, Martha has such a bad spirit, nobody wouldn't run around with her. She's out there telling, Lord, uh, if you'd have been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Uh, and her spirit with God on the way <laughs> stopped her. Huh? Well, how many times we've stopped God? <laughs> I thought about this that, that sometimes I, I wrote this down sitting back there. Sometimes that unforgiving spirit stops the Lord. <laughs> you ever, I pastor people. There's people come in. You know, they be sitting around here. Hey, it, it'll happen in visitors. It'll happen in church folk. They'd be sitting there and they look up and say, Oh, God, what are they doing here? <laughs> I don't even like them. They hurt me one time. They done this or they done that. Amen. And all of a sudden they get the service gets going good, brother Bobby. That person's been to ask God to forgive them. They got all cleansed up. And all of a sudden they just go, Woo! And they sit there and say, I don't believe nothing like that. They're acting a fool. They're a Pharisee. My friend looking at the legs out shouting over there. My friend, listen, you got a worse spirit than they got. Amen. I tell you when a man stands up or lady stands up and says, God forgive them, and they ask God forgive them, and my friend God washed their sins in the book. My friend, he forgive them, amen. I tell you, you ought to forgive them. My friend, let that go. You know it's amazing. We won't be forgiven, but we don't want to forgive nobody else. And sometimes that old unforgiving spirit that causes that. And it ain't just among, it just ain't among church folks. It's among preachers sometimes. <laughs> hey Amen. Preachers got the most unforgiving. They want all their church folks to forgive, but they ain't got too much of it. Hey Amen. I don't, I don't want to get, get, I don't want to get, to do that. that unbelieving spirit. <laughs> hey Amen. That unbelieving spirit. You know, Brother Doug, it don't matter what happens Sunday. Come on. <laughs> and we're trying to get God in here. We still got folks sitting around who don't believe God can do it. Right. I don't believe God can solve their problem. Well, they may solve everybody else's problem, but they ain't going to be solving my problems. Oh my <laughs> they may take care of everything else, but they ain't going to tell you, I don't believe he can do nothing about me. And you know what? Your spirit could hinder God from moving and doing it. You might be the one he wants to do something for and break the meeting out. <laughs> Amen. I mean, he may be the one. I never will forget. I never will forget. I was preaching a meeting over in North Carolina years ago. Never been to that church in my life. Got there late. I'm always early, but that night, because of traffic, Winston Salem, North Carolina, I, I was late getting there. Went in, there's done a singing. I went in and sat on the seat. I didn't know who the pastor was. Never met him. He called me on the phone. I said, Which one's the pastor? He said, He's sitting right over there. And my friend, when they shook hands, they come over and shook my hand. Told me he's glad it's there. And everybody knows I just got there, Brother Bobby. And my friend, they sung a few songs. Turn me loose to preach. I was a big way of preaching. No, we'll forget it. I come down the aisle. I said, You take this woman right here. And I passed all these people up. And I went over and I said, You take this woman right over here. I said, Supposing they're on out. And what they all talk to each other? You could have heard a pin drop. I mean, that thing said, Boom. And that pastor sitting there, he said, Oh my God. And my friend, listen. And I got through prayer. I said, They on out. They won't, they won't get right with each other. And my friend, they won't talk to each other. I said, Boy, you expect we're going to have revival over top all that kind of spirit and I preached when I give the invitation that, that woman got up come the aisle that woman got up come the altar next thing I know brother Doug is in the middle hugging each other and the pastor said they ain't spoke to each other in two years he said how in the name of God did you pick them out and I said I did and the Holy Ghost did I don't tell you what meeting broke out we went about three weeks beating broke out my friends that thing had it bold sometimes that old unforgiving spirit that old unbelieving spirit that old hateful spirit my friend that old critical spirit it'll hinder God from showing up. My friend had a trend. You know, sometimes we're critical about the pastor, what he does. We don't like what he does. Well, go somewhere else. <laughs> Amen. I don't like what they do over there. Well, go somewhere else. Hey, my friend, when you go over there, you'll mess it up. <laughs> Amen. Come on, help me out. I'm just trying to preach. Amen. My friend, will listen. My friend, that old, that old uh, uh, jealousy spirit. Pull that, I'll kill you. Well, they got the same, they got the same, James got the same twice. They ain't sung yet. Oh, my. <laughs> huh? How come they got to preach twice? Huh? How come they got to preach on Sunday morning? I have to do Wednesday night. 
Amen. Come on now. Help me out. Come on now. Uh -huh. Oh, that old jealous spirit, jealous because of this, that. Uh, oh, somebody gets an offering. Why? Well, never got one. Uh, well, probably, you probably don't need one. Amen. Uh, and my friend, listen. Uh, and my friend, that old jealousy, the envy, critical, selfish, uh, fair sickle. Uh, is that a word? Is that a word, Mama? <laughs> Did I say that right? Kay, talk, Kay tried to teach me that word over here, and I couldn't never say it. <laughs> I don't, all I could say was Pharisee. Say it for me, Brother Doug. That's right. That's what I'm trying to say. That old self-righteous spirit. You're holy than everybody else. No, you're the one that need to get right. <laughs> Amen. That old selfish, that old prideful spirit. That my friend, I tell you what, you say, preacher, what are you talking about? I said, somebody go get God. She said for the Lord. When he did come, she had such a bad spirit. It stopped him in his track. Lord, help. We're trying to get God. Basically, some sinner needs to be saved. Some problem needs to be solved. Some home they need to put, be put back together. This preacher that he's talking about may need encouragement. His wife may need a boost. And my friend, we got to get God to get it done. And if your spirit stops God, we're going to miss hell, and you're going to be held accountable for breaking the meeting because of the critical spirit and the spirit that we got. <laughs> Come on now. It gets better. Come on. I thought about I thought about listen. Uh, uh, she had uh, hey, her, 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 her complaining spirit limit. She had limited faith. And it limited God. Huh? Then let me say that not only Martha's spirit, but watch this. Martha went up there and told him off, you know. In fact, in verse 28, she comes, and the Bible said she went, and in and, and verse 28, when she had so said, she went away and called Mary secretly. And said, the master has come and called for thee. <laughs> in between the lines I read, I done told him off. <laughs> you can go out there if you want to. You can waste your time. Lazarus is dead. I done told him he's dead. I done told him he's stinking. I done told him he ought to came when we called him. I done tell him a piece of my mind. Amen. And some of you need to watch that because you got too many pieces left. <laughs> and the Bible said, and the Bible said, as soon as she, Mary, heard that, she arose quickly and came with him. Now Jesus was not yet come to town. And he said, But where's was in that place where Martha met him? I told you. Her spirit stopped him. He stopped dead still. Never moved another inch. And then the Bible said, Then the Jews, uh, in verse 31, uh, were with her in the house and comforted her. When they saw Mary, the she arose hastily and went farther. They, they followed her. She goeth forth to the grave of the week. Then when Mary was come to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet, saying, Watch this. What did Mary say? Or Martha say? Martha said, Lord, if you'd have been here, my brother wouldn't have died. On, but the Bible said, Mary fell at his feet, and she said, Lord, if you'd have just been here, my brother wouldn't die. She didn't have her finger up telling him off. She had tears flowing in her face, bowing at his feet, weeping, and said, Lord, if you'd just been here, my brother would have died. You watch this. And, the, and she said, in verse 33, when Jesus therefore saw her weeping, the Jews also were weeping uh, with her, he groaned in his spirit and said, Where have you laid him? <laughs> That's what I come for. <laughs> Take me to him. <laughs> Lead the way. That's what I'm here for. My friend, he got back Martha's spirit, got over in that good spirit, and my friend, it motivated Jesus to move out again and head down to do what he was going to do. I'll tell you what, my friend, I don't know about you. I want that good spirit. I want that good, compassionate spirit. I want that good, broken hearted spirit. I ain't a toot my own horn. I lay nowhere in the motel all day after I got over here. I lay nowhere in the motel, Brother Doug. I said, God, if you want me to preach this, you I've been carrying this for three weeks. I said, I told Casey, I just leave me alone. I laid over and I said, oh God, I'm the least of the least until I love you. And God, if you just give me the right spirit, I'll try to buy the best to preach the house down. I'm going to tell you what, my friend, I ain't here for pride. I ain't here in a preaching contest. I'm just preaching, thank God, and letting God help me. Hey, hey, I'm too old. I'm too old to play around now. Hey, Martha's spirit. Hey, I want my spirit. I want my spirit to move God. Yes. Well. well, the Bible said she fell at his feet. She weeping. She had unlimited faith. Her spirit motivated. You yeah, watch this. She didn't run around by herself either. Oh. <laughs> when she got up, when Mary, when Martha went out, they thought, "Well, I guess she's tired and leaving." They're probably glad she left. <laughs> I've had a few church members. I was glad when they left. <laughs> 
Amen. Amen. We got up, turned them out, and I made them move the second both. <laughs> and I was the moderator. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But I'll tell you what, my friend, her spirit moved. Her spirit motivated God. Then let me say this. I don't know if there's got to be a release of the spirit, realness of the right spirit, but there's got to be a removal of the hindrance. <laughs> now the Bible said in verse 38, well, well, Jesus, the Bible said Jesus wept. Then it says the Jews behold how he loved him. Someone said, well, couldn't he have done this and helped him? He's uh, helped others. In verse 38 said, Jesus therefore again groaning in himself coming to a grave. It was a cave and a stone laid. Jesus said, take you away the stone. Yeah. In other words, he said, I didn't put that stone between me and him. Right. Right. <laughs> Amen. Well, watch this, watch this, read it. Yep. Jesus said, take you away the stone. Now Mary and Martha, all them Jews is down there. He's at the grave. He's fixing to, he's fixing to perform a miracle. <laughs> he said, take you away the stone. And get old sister Martha. That bad spirit yeah. jumped up and said, Lord, he stinketh. Yeah. Yeah. said, if you move that stone, you're going to stir up a stink. <laughs> There's a stink behind that stone, and if you move it, that stink going to... You know what? Some preachers are afraid to deal with stuff because they're afraid they'll stir up a stink. <laughs> Sometimes I like a stink. <laughs> My wife, we were run over skunk. She said, "Come on, well, that hates that. That's an awful smell." I said, "I, I kind of like it." <laughs> She'll say, "You're weird, huh? <laughs> Come on, now. <laughs> huh?" Amen. You say, "Why'd you like it?" Because if it stinks that bad, that skunk's dead. <laughs> Ain't gonna bother us no more. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and you know what? Sometimes we got to remove the hindrance, and sometimes it does stir up a stink. Sometimes you get right, God, it'll stir up a stink. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> you, ever, you ever seen some of these women? I'm not against women, just going to use real estate. You ever seen some of these women, their husband's lost? Every time they come to church, oh, preacher, pray my husband gets saved. They say, pray my husband gets saved. And my friend, they go on for a week, month, two years, maybe a year or so. And all of a sudden, Mother Dougie comes in here and gets saved. Only problem is, he really gets saved. <laughs> and he comes coming Wednesday night. Sunday morning, Sunday night, Sunday school, food station. He starts giving. He starts really getting in here. And the wife jumps up and she backs up and says, Hey, listen, I didn't mean you to go call crazy, religious crazy. I just want you to get saved and not go to hell. I didn't want you to give all her money over her. I don't want to go over every service. I don't, you know, and they bucks up and cause his problems. <laughs> Come on now. And sometimes we're afraid for God to break out. We're afraid for God to get here because we're afraid what we're going to give up. Yeah. What we're going to move out of our lives. Yeah. Come on, brother Bob. Huh? Yeah. Every time some little old something happens, a little old problem, like, you know what we're going to do? I'm I, 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 I hard of this too. Everybody runs down here and somebody else says, just claim First John was the first John 1 9. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us. Just claim that and everything will be okay. And they get up and go right back out doing the same thing. In the book of Psalms it said, my friend, whosoever confesses and forsaketh. If you're going to get right with God, you've got to leave it here. It can't be a part of your life no more. Uh, and we're afraid if we get God here. So you can get the preacher here. You can get the best preacher here. Huh? You can get the best singers in here. And you can preach and get by them. I can preach it, might any, it may not even bother you. We're in a day day. I don't care what you preach on, but it don't bother me. We're in a new age. Well, we ain't got a new Bible. Right. If you believe we're in a new age, go get your new Bible. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're the old Bible around. It ain't changed. Right. In fact, this is forever settled in heaven. Yeah. When you get to heaven, you're going to be judged by this. If I'm going to be judged by this, I might as well line up with it. Yeah. Right. Amen. Yeah. We was in the service a while back. And one of the men in the church got up and read his first scripture. And he gets tickled me. And I was sitting there, and he read this first scripture, Brother Doug. And it said over in Isaiah 664, it said, God, you know, he's praying for God to come down. He said, God, come down and shake the mountain. I told my wife, I said, I didn't what that said. I said, it ran the mountain that he might float down. I said, you can shake it and it's still there. Right. But if it flows down, it's gone. Right. <laughs> Amen. 
I said, we don't need a revival just to get shook up. We need to get a revival that there's change takes place in our life. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. All things become new. If and is and are, if you're in Christ, there's a change and all things will be passed away. Got people coming down there and getting right with God and going, go home. ain't a liquor change. Every time you have a meeting, to come down there and do the same thing. Now these big old, I'm gonna get these, everybody gets on me for this, but I'm not even not big, really big for gets against all these big crusades and everything. I still like meeting in the church. <laughs> God love the church. I just like meeting in the church. That's just that's just me. And, and I'm not criticizing nobody else. I just like meeting in the church. Amen. And you know what? You know what happens sometimes. <laughs> we get wrapped up in the atmosphere. Huh? Come on, help me out. Go to some of these meetings. <laughs> go to some of these count meetings, the old folks' meetings, the young people meetings. And my, you, you watch them. They go, woo! Hey, woo! Get the motel, woo! Go down the street, woo! And they come back to their own church. If I could, I'd go to that man's church. <laughs> come on now. <laughs> Y'all still like me? Huh? <laughs> Amen. I'll tell you what, I, I just believe if you can't shout in your own church on your own preacher's preaching and your own singer singing, you shout down yonder, ain't going to be worth too much. And you shout up yonder, ain't going to be worth much. And I'll tell you what, if you get, if you get by the Holy Ghost, it's going to last longer than a week. It'll last when you get back. It'll last the next time you meet. It'll last and last and last. I'm telling you what I'm talking about. If you get God and God come down and show some things in your life, you'll be ready to get rid of them. Yeah. Got to be a remove. In other words, God said, I ain't doing nothing to get rid of that. I didn't put it there. Yeah. You know what? I think sometimes we're putting a lot of stones up. Right. It's blocking the working of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> I know what I'm talking about. I'm not, I didn't come in here on a load of punkies. <laughs> I know one church went one of them, one of them big meetings. Three of them in one year. All the young, every one of the young folks in their group got saved. They brought them home, and baptized. Them. Don't get quiet now. <laughs> Two months later, they went back to another one. The same. Young folks, the same crowd, every one of them got saved again. Wow. Took them home, baptized them. Hello. Went to the third meeting. Every one of them got saved, baptized again. I told that pastor, I said, Lord God, you're going to waterlog them people. Yeah. Right. I said, man, they need to get something to last. Right. Get something, my friend, that'll change their life. Right. Get something, my friend, they don't have to run back down. And my friend, get recapped every week. I'm going to tell you what, my friend, listen. I, he said, move the stone. Martha said, he stink. You go, hey, it may stir up a stink, but what's on the southern side of that stink will be well worth it. Well worth it. When the glory of God, Jesus said, hey, you want to see the glory of God? Move it. <laughs> They could have said, he could have said, well, we ain't moving it. You know what? Jesus left. Right. Lives have stayed dead. Right. Wouldn't have been no glory. Right. Right. Amen. <laughs> so it got to be a removal of the hindrance. Take ye away the stone. Note verse number, verse number 40. He said, Jesus said unto her, Said I not unto thee, that if thou was believed, thou shouldest see the glory of God. He said, there's glory on the other side of that stone. Yeah. <laughs> You ever think about this? I thought about this. I, I wrote this down over in the motel. The natural world, seeing is believing. The spiritual world, believing is seeing. <laughs> That's a big difference, ain't it? So I said, let me see something. God said, just believe and you'll see something. <laughs> Amen. All right, you got to move on. Not only, not only there's got to be a release of the invitation, there's got to be a realness of the right spirit, there's got to be a, a removal of the hindrance, and then there's got to be a release and a responding to the word. They got, finally got the stone moved. Finally got the stone moved. Took away the stone, verse 41. Jesus looked up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee, thou hast heard me, and I knew that thou hast heard me. You know what Jesus said? I know what I was going to do this all the time. <laughs> 
four days late, but I'm, I was going to do it. Uh, hey, God ain't on no time clock. God don't get on your time clock. Amen. He said, he goes on and says, because these people which stand by me, I said it that they may believe that thou sent me. And when he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. He that was dead came forth bound hand and foot with glory cloth and his face was bound about the napkin Jesus said loose him and let him go Jesus said with his own words Lazarus come forth Lazarus my friend he heard that voice he knowed that voice and he obeyed that voice guess what found life <laughs> we hear his voice sometimes we kind of know his voice sometimes but we don't want to obey his voice I was thinking about this the other day. I never thought about this. I know all of you are smarter than I am, but I just never had thought about this, Brother Doug. And you, you probably know this since you, since you were uh, 20 years ago when we first started. I wish you had told me. But you ever think about this Lazarus when he died? In my mind, I just pictured the man over in the grave. <laughs> Jesus came over and said, Come out of there, Lazarus. He went in that grave. He's in paradise. Come on, brother when they died in those days, they went in paradise. They wouldn't land over there. You talking about demonstration of the power of God? Jesus said, "Last come." That's why he hollered with a loud voice, "Last come forth!" And that voice went all the way down into paradise. Right. I thought, I know I'm crazy, Sister Ned. I know you know I'm crazy too. But I thought about this, Brother Doug. Uh, he, 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 three or four days ago, he showed up in paradise. <laughs> He's down there. Abraham said, "Man, <laughs> tell us about it, Lazarus." He said, "Well, I'm sick." <laughs> He said, but I'll tell you, my friend, Jesus is walking. He's doing this, and he's doing that, he's doing this, and he's a testified, maybe testified two or three days, and all of a sudden he says, wait a minute, I'll finish it later. i got to go back. <laughs> the voice is calling. The Son of God's calling. i, I got to go back. And thank God he left paradise and went back. Why? He responded. He responded to the word. <laughs> I tell you what, my friend. If you go, if you gonna get God, somebody got to respond to the word. He ain't gonna come without the word. He ain't gonna get saved without the word. If they come out here and hearing about the word of God, you ain't gonna get right with God without the word. Huh? You know what? Words, words sell a lot. Settle. Did I say that right? Settle. Is that right, Mama? Settle a lot. You ever have a fuss? I know y'all don't never fuss. Me and Kay fuss sometimes. Just make up. Yeah, we'll fuss and fuss, carry on, and y'all get happy. I say, kiss me now, baby. <laughs> All I have to go through just to get that kiss. So, like, you need to learn that, amen. But, you know, sometimes, you know, well, you know we all have a little disagreements. Amen. <laughs> At the best. <laughs> I know, Johnny, you ain't never had one, but anyway. But we all have them little disagreements. And you know what? We'll pout. Us men, we go outside. We mowed the yard yesterday. We just go out and mow it again. <laughs> just want to be outside. And the wife get in the kitchen, bang, clang, 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 you know, bang around. <laughs> and the whole time we're clanging and banging and mowing the yard. But you know what? We finally are going there and I say, honey, we need to talk. And we sit down and we start talking. You know what? Through our words and her words and and my apology and her apology and my admitting wrong and her bit wrong through our little talking and everything my friend the misunderstanding is you know what we reunite and that thing settles yeah. words brings that peace back to our heart right. yeah. amen that's right <laughs> I mean I, I kind of like him words and get things I, I don't like sitting back in the bedroom watching TV and hers in the living room on the couch yeah, no, little biddings in the bedroom <laughs> begging in the bedroom <laughs> I don't get that thing settled so we can watch the same thing Sit on the same couch. Amen. I'm going to tell you what, my friend. I tell you what, some of you need to listen to preaching just a little bit more. And my friend, let that preaching, my friend, go in your heart. And you respond to that preaching. Respond to that word. If you read the word of God, my friend, he would show you. Preacher wouldn't have to preach it. Just get this Bible and start reading it. You'd be amazed how the Holy Ghost will pinpoint something wrong in your life. Amen. I mean, there's got to be. There's got to be. Hey, he heard his voice. You know what? Hey, Jesus said, I didn't put it there. You move it. You move it. Get out of the way. And I'll show you what I can do. 
Then last of all, there's got to be a, a, a revelation of true worship. Okay, he's sick, he's dead. He's sick, he sleepeth, he's dead, he stinks. In verse 43 and verse 44, he's alive. He comes forth. Now, what, what, let, me, let me say this before we get there. Look in verse 44. The Bible said, He that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot, grave clothes. His face was bound and back with a napkin. And Jesus said, Loose him, let him go. Because you know when Jesus come out, his clothes were there in the grave. The napkin was laid over here. Lazarus come out, napkin still there, grave clothes still on him. Jesus said, I didn't bind him up. You know what's wrong with us? Some of us, we're binding them up with little rules and regulations. And <laughs> you know, hey, hey, we had, a, we had a stupid preacher down home, if he is a preacher. He got him told his church the other Sunday. I may have told you this the other day, but he got him told his, he called, told his church, Brother Doug. They had a good, pretty good little crowd. He got him told him, said, if you got tattoos, we don't need you. If you wear short skirts, if, you, if your shirt's over your knees, we don't need you. If your hair's over your ears, we don't need you. If you got an earring hanging out your nose, we don't want you. <laughs> I'm a little bit mean. The next Sunday, we was preaching down below that church. I said, let's circle down through here. They had 15 people. <laughs> he didn't run them all off. Huh? Had men out there. Look, you ain't going to believe this, Brother Doug. He had men out there with tapes going to measure the women when they come in. I tell you what, if he put a tape on my wife, I'd have busted him right in the nose. Yes, right. I'd have been so spiritual, I'd just bust him in the nose. <laughs> you know what? He's got rules and regulations. He's trying to regulate righteousness. I'm going to tell you what, if God gets in your heart just enough, you don't have to regulate nothing. You'd be glad. Amen. Amen. I mean, Kay's been married 50 years. Soon coming up, about a month, we've been married 50 years. And I said, everybody told us it wouldn't last. Everybody said, hey, it won't last. Amen. We're the only one lasted. Yeah. I'm serious. To ask her. All our friends we run with, they all divorce sometimes two or three times. We're the only ones out of that group that's still together. Amen. Somebody said, somebody said, they said, preacher, uh, I was over at a food car sometime. They said, preacher, how, how did you and your wife make it for 50 years? I said, brother, 50 years ago. I said, I seen Kay come around Jack's little restaurant. I said, I seen her come around and made that circle. And said, I, we stopped. I got over there and seen her. And I tell you, I said, there's something flip flopped in my heart that day. And it ain't never flop filled back. <laughs> it's as good as it ever was. You know why? God put her in my heart. He knows what I was going to need to travel up the road. <laughs> I'll tell you what, if you ever let that word get in your heart, Jeremiah, I don't mean to preach so long, brother Doug, Jeremiah said, Jeremiah said, I ain't going to preach no more. I'm quitting. <laughs> I'm quitting. It's true. <laughs> all of a sudden, I don't know, he must have been reading the word or something. <laughs> all, of a sudden, he, all of a sudden, he said, whoo, it's like firing the bones. I can't quit. And he went back and preached again. You know what? He got back in that book and it's like firing his bones. Amen. Right. Then let me close this. My right, friend, let me close. There's a revelation of true words at John chapter 12, verse number 1, 2, and 3. Listen to what he says. Then six days before the Passover came to Bethany, Lazarus, which was, which, uh, well, Lazarus was, which had been dead, whom he'd raised from dead. There they made him a supper. And Martha served. But Lazarus, the one of them that set the table with him, then took Mary a pound of ointment, a spike, very costly, and on his feet, Jesus wiped his feet with the hair, and the house was filled with the odor. And look, I, I, thought about, I thought about my friend, a revelation of true word. Number one, my friend, uh, 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 the fellowship was right. Yeah. Yeah. I was sitting there fellowship with the Lord. Yeah. Right. That's good. Service was right. Yeah. Over yonder, Martha was complaining, Lord, I've got to do all this myself. Now she's just happily serving. Right. Right. No complaints. Uh, and Mary is worshiping. You know what? When you get God, you get the head in your yeah. right. Now, word of God begins to flow. <laughs> your fellowship will be right. right. Your service will be joyful. Right. And your worship will be real. Right. <laughs> you say, preacher, what's the, what's the secret? Somebody got to go get God. Yeah. This would not have been the same story if God, if they hadn't got God. Yeah. Right. And I'm going to tell you, there ain't no different what to happen around here. If somebody just go get the Lord. Amen. <laughs> we, we was in the meeting the other day. We was in the meeting the other day, and we, me and Kay was going in. I was all fired up. I was ready to preach. And one of the men met, met us out there and shaking their hand. He said, Brother Goodson, said, I hope the Lord shows up. 
I said, oh, he will. I brought him with me. <laughs> I said, I brought him with me. I've been to study. I've been to praying. I got a message from God. I brought him with me. I got up that day and preached the house down. Preached myself to death. Couldn't hardly stand up when I got through preaching. An old boy come by and said, I believe you brought him with you, Brother Mike. I said, you know what? Everybody ought to bring him with you. Got to get up on Sunday morning. Don't lay in the bed till you can't get, get to the last minute. Get up early. Get in the bedroom. And go get God. That's God to meet with you. That's God to meet with you, preacher. That's God to meet with you, singer. That's God to show up. He can show up every service if we just go get him. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcforums.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.